Gents, I just want to pause the episode for a moment to let you know about the Strong Men of Value Academy. You will have heard me refer to it a number of times and I want to bring more attention to it. So this isn't just a program. It's a life-changing environment and community of men who are focused on personal and professional growth. We're looking at areas of relationships, wealth and health, things to help you thrive and maximize your life. Imagine having bi-monthly one-on-one coaching sessions with myself, weekly group coaching calls, and an incredible brotherhood of high achievers by your side. Now we're diving into resilience, leadership, and holistic growth to not just succeed in your career, but to thrive in your health and your relationships. Your journey to greatness, it starts here. So join the movement and you can apply for the Strong Men of Value Academy. You can head to the manthatcanproject.com to find out more. You're listening to The Man That Can Project with Lockie Stewart, a global movement created to empower men and open up what's really going through their minds by having real and raw conversations about life's unique challenges and our individual ways of processing it all. Welcome to The Man That Can Project. Welcome to The Man That Can Project podcast. I'm your host, Lockie Stewart, and today's episode is really going to be a raw, rough one straight off the cuff uh i thought while i've been sitting out on the uh coffee or the coffee lounge my scotch lounge uh going through what i'm about to talk about i thought you know there's two reasons why i think this is a good episode to share with you guys and and i am sorry if it goes around in circles but i'll do my best and i have taken a few little notes just so i do get my point across and uh really provide you with some ways of thinking and some questions to overcome your own mind and maybe some negative thoughts or um, yeah, not, not empowering or let's just say disempowering emotions. Right. So uh, before obviously I dive into this, we have just launched a three day strong men of value masterclass. Now this is going to be online from the 6th till the 8th of September. So just over two weeks away from when this comes out, you can register by heading to our free Facebook group, the man that can project, and you'll be able to register there. Uh, It'll go for about 30 to 60 minutes a day. You will be given daily tasks, worksheets to fill out, and it's completely free. Uh, My intention for doing this is obviously we've got that community with over a thousand blokes now. And I want to help give you guys some tools to, to kick off the last quarter of uh, 2020 and uh, sorry 2021 and move into Christmas with a bit more momentum. Uh, obviously, there's a heap of chaos going on in the world, so it'd be cool to put you guys in some higher spirits and give you some tools and and just provide the space for you guys to to know that uh, you're capable of maybe more than what you've realized. But that's my only plug for today. You can find that in the free Facebook group. Uh, but let's let's dive into it. So, gents, I guess for me, this is a really around owning my own mind and my own emotions. And one thing I like to be really transparent about uh, with everything that I talk about, you know, I, I feel while I, I coach and mentor others and uh, run programs and, and I guess constantly campaigning for men to be better, men to take ownership. And as a result of that, we can be to have whatever we want uh, from our lives. I'm a huge believer in that. I think that um, one thing maybe I don't show as much anymore, maybe because I'm, I'm fearful of losing credibility, but I also feel, you know, this is a fucking normal thing. Uh, and like I mentioned, I, I felt I wanted to talk about this so I could provide what you know, some days are like for me, but also I think the fact that I can talk about it, it's going to help me navigate it uh, better myself um, because I think that's that's a huge thing. So obviously uh, today, today is Tuesday. I don't even know what date it is, but I think it's like the, tw- Let me check. the 24th of August this year is cruising by. And today and yesterday, I've been feeling sad. I've been feeling overwhelmed and anxious and I guess even not valued, right? Not significant. And for those who've been following me for a long time or listening to the podcast even for a long time, this this happens periodically for me. Like I go through moments where I'm I'm feeling, you know, un with uh, you know, unshakable confidence. I'm in massive momentum. 
I'm feeling loved and everything's really going well in my life. And then every now and then, whether it's due to being overworked or uh, various other things in my life happening, um, I start to feed the negative dog, right? And uh, when I say the negative dog, I say, you know, on both shoulders, we either have the positive dog, the one that's empowering and telling you can do this and, and always uplifting you. And then on the other side, we have that negative dog with the one that's, you know, constantly nipping at your bloody heels and telling you not to take risks, telling you that you're not good enough. And uh, it's definitely something that I know a lot of other blokes experience as well. And while I'm always on the other side where, you know, more often than not, I'm in the, in the thick of it, feeling good, crushing goals, helping people, helping myself, even just having, having fun. This is the, this is the flip side of that. And I guess, you know, the tool I learned last week for those who are in that Facebook group, I was talking about the wheel of emotion. And I, I really believe it's been a helpful, helpful tool for myself and definitely for other people. So if you haven't looked at the wheel of emotion, just jump on, jump on Google and uh, Google wheel of emotion. It was bloody amazing to, to figure that out. But let's, uh, you know, for myself, I was thinking, why, why am I feeling so sad? And I guess unworthy and unloved, like there's just this empty feeling and it's making me almost stressed and anxious for no real apparent reason. Obviously there is, but like if I weren't to dig deeper, I would just be like, well, this is the way it is. And when I get this way, uh, gentlemen, I shut down a bit. I become blunt and I almost like act like that little boy who when you know, they say that that hurt people hurt people. That's how I feel I want to respond because I know why I would do that. I, I know and I believe that I would do that because I want to be able to do, create the friction point to have the conversations that probably aren't being had. And, you know, looking at everything that's going on in my life, uh, my missus had her Bucks party over the week, uh, Bucks party, her uh, hens party over the weekend and it had a fucking epic epic weekend and everything like that. And I think, and I feel like it happens whenever we spend long periods of time apart. And I believe I'm a good communicator, but there is times where it lapses. And when we don't, you know, stay in contact over the weekend um, and the, the connection, I almost feel like I have this uh, transition period, right? Obviously the first night she goes away or even I just, I go away. Um, there's that first period where you, you, or for me, I experienced that, missing um and loss almost and then i get in my groove and, and carry on with life and then it's the same when either i get back or my missus gets back it's like i'm not always straight back into loving having her around or vice versa so it's that transition period where i'm easing in like i don't want to disrupt anything i don't want to disrupt my own groove right because i've had my own time and own space but i think for me that actually causes more of a problem uh than it does do good right i think um as a result of yesterday, but having that standoffish feeling, you know, my missus came home and I just continued working. I didn't um, necessarily race out and, and greet her and welcome her home, which I think played on my mind a bit. I wish, you know, in my head, I was going, I, sh I wish I could actually do this. You know, I wish I, I want to, want to go out and do that. But then I was thinking work is so important to me. And I think because when I started focusing on what I hadn't done, which was, go great. I started feeling that. I'm like, wonder how she feels. Does that make me a bad person? Uh, why do I feel I need this sort of transition period? Is it me just being lazy or is it me um, prioritizing other things? And obviously, you know what happens when we fucking overthink things. It goes, your brain goes absolutely bonkers, right? And, uh, you know, that led on to small talk, a, a whole ton of small talk. And I didn't ask her necessarily how her hens party was i went to bed early i did a whole heap of things that i am not you know i, I don't feel a me upholding the standards that i want to have as a man right like i wanted to be interested i wanted to ask questions i wanted to find out how she went i just wanted to to connect really i wanted to feel love and i wanted to to show love but for whatever reason i i couldn't couldn't quite do it i was just battling my own mind. And I think um, you know, that had a ripple effect into the, today because once again, I was overthinking and I'm still, the reason why I'm doing this podcast is because I'm really trying to, I'd love you guys uh, if you've experienced similar and you know, I'd love to hear your perspectives or anything like that. Just 
um, message me or anything like that. But, you know, when I, when I started looking at that uh, wheel of emotion, and I was like, right, oh, I'm feeling anxious because there's a lot going on at work right now and it's very overwhelming. Um, we're coming into November. I'm thinking, okay, well, what event should I be doing? I'm seeing, I've, I've launched that three day program and looking at other people in the space doing collaborations. And I, I sit there thinking to myself, am I doing enough? Like, I don't feel like I'm doing enough. And once again, guys, this, I know as I speak this out, I know this is me talking to that, that negative dog, right? I'm focusing on what I haven't done, what I don't have rather than what I do do and what I have done and um, what I do have, right? Which is ultimately where I want to and generally where I'm focusing when, you know, I'm flying, I'm fucking crushing life and I'm feeling good about myself. So logically, I know what I need to do as I start talking. I'm actually starting to fucking, this is paying off, gents, by actually talking about it more, verbalizing it. But I know what I need to do to get back to that. But I think the conversation needs to, to happen and I need to, to give love and, and feel love um, as well in order to, to feel worthy, right? I, I'm looking extrinsically at the moment based over the last 24 hours for that, for that validation, for that, that love and connection when, you know, that's always awesome. But do I deserve it with how I acted? <laughs> I wouldn't do it. You know, I often sit there and think if my partner was treating me the way that I treat her when I'm thinking about things, how would I, how would I feel? And yeah, I probably wouldn't feel very good to be honest. I wouldn't feel loved. I wouldn't feel like, I, you know, I've just come off an amazing weekend and I don't have anything to, to, you know, I don't get to talk about it. So I think, um, you know, even coming at it from that perspective is really, really uh, making me think about things a little bit better. But obviously where I was going with that before it tangent uh, diverted off was the, uh, the feeling of being unworthy, right? And I have to look within for that, that you know, worthiness. But obviously when you're in a relationship, um, you, you do love that external validation. You do love coming home to a, to a household where you, you know, instantly you feel that connection and, and love. So, um, or just even connection. Cause I think at the end of the day, all of us do want that love and connection, but knowing what I know about myself, how I handle it, and maybe an area that I definitely need to work on is, is how I can change my standards and uphold my standards to know that right. Oh, this transition period is there. And by me believing that it has to stay there, I'm not, giving Amy or giving our relationship what it needs for me to get in return, what I need, right. Which is that, that love and connection. So uh, something to think about for myself, I guess a little bit of food for thought and a few action steps is to then go, okay, well, if this is how I'm feeling, this is my transition period. What can I do to, to break that barrier down sooner um, prior? And I guess I'll have to have a conversation, but maybe even send excited text messages beforehand or, um, be waiting at the door, uh, various other things I'll have to, to think about, but that's what I'll do when I get off here and I continue journaling, gents. And uh, I guess uh, some points that I wrote down here um, for me to think about and maybe for anyone who else experiences uh, similar things or can relate to this is, you know, I, I was journaling before um, about what was going on in my life so I could really start thinking about all the things that are happening and maybe potentially where this sadness, where this unworthiness and and the anxieties coming from but i also then wrote you know went into a bit more depth around why potentially why am i feeling this way and rather than saying i don't know it's it's coming up with answers as i've sort of thrown a few out here and it's sort of starting to puzzle uh, piece things together for myself right but i guess the final point on that is what hasn't been communicated and to be honest the thing that I believe is truly lacking is the fact that I haven't communicated effectively with, with Amy over the last 24 hours. And it's been because I've shut down and I've internalized a lot of stuff. And the longer I leave it, the harder it becomes. And, and every time I think about wanting to say something, I just, it feels overwhelming and it feels like I've got a brick dropped on my fucking chest. Uh, so I think, you know, if I were to give myself one action step, that first thing I need to do is, is to rip the bandaid off and have that conversation and uh, engage and continue building that, that connection and the love and uh, communication to, to keep going with that. So gents, 
this has been really helpful for me. So I, I would highly encourage you if you don't have a podcast, just openly talk, whether you put on your voice recorder on your phone and just talk about what's going on, um, write down maybe how you are feeling, why you think you're feeling that way, uh, what hasn't been communicated potentially or what isn't happening and see, see if you can improve your own understanding of your mind and your emotions. And I think the more, I guess, clarity you create, like I've sort of done here for myself by giving answers and, and verbalizing things, it makes me feel less overwhelmed and actually makes me feel a whole heap better um, to move forward. So gents, yeah, <laughs> looking back at this, I'm like, I should have made some more uh, coachable or learning points from this. But I think what I really wanted to get across for you guys is the fact that we're all still learning. We're all still experiencing life just because we learn a tool or a strategy or we set a goal doesn't mean we're going to nail it. It it requires consistent daily attention and action. And sometimes um, when the pressure's on, maybe our standards do drop as I feel mine have over the last 24 hours. And obviously it's, no, it's not hugely detrimental, but if I were to continue to act in this way, maybe it, you know, it might be, but I think to give myself a bit of a wrap on it, I think um, a few things I've done well, rather than when I felt shut down and wanted to sort of ruffle a few feathers. So the conversation could have been had. I allowed that space between stimulus and response to be time where I've read, I've meditated, I journaled, I'd done this podcast to, and I actually listened to a few podcasts. I went for a walk in the sun just to really try and see if any thoughts came to mind or, or see if it passed. And I think that space, as I mentioned, between stimulus and response is really important uh, rather than reacting is like we, we hold that space to really understand what's going on for our, us as individuals or us as men and uh, how we can best respond in that way to br- deliver a positive outcome. And I guess the positive outcome through identifying the cause and really understanding it and how we can minimize the time or, or overcome this much sooner, but also the output into our quality of life. So for me right now, it's, it's the relationship. How do I um, maximize that love and connection uh, in a short period of time. So that's going to be a fun little challenge, gents, but thank you guys for tuning in. And uh, once again, gents, jump back on for, you know, I was going to, don't even know where I was going to go with that, but jump back in uh, and continue listening to more of the episodes. We always have incredible guests and more often than not, I have more structured chats than this, but I think I just wanted to, to get a real one off or not saying that they're not real, but like something that, uh, is more about how I'm feeling them rather than what I'm thinking will be of value for you guys. So thank you guys for tuning in. Remember, hit that subscribe button. Join the free Facebook group if you want, want uh, just to stay, stay in contact. Anyway, gentlemen, I appreciate your time. Signing out, Lockie Stewart. Thank you for listening to the Man That Can Project podcast. My name is Lockie Stewart, and I hope you enjoyed this episode and found it helpful. If you did, please take a moment to rate and review the Man That Can Project on your favorite podcast platform. And don't forget to subscribe to stay up to date with our newest episodes. We'll see you again next time.